Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Saturday the 19th of August. Now, of course, there's nothing to see here, but uh, in the United Kingdom, at least, the revolving door between big pharma and government continues to spin. And I don't think you're quite squeaky clean on this in the United States either. But I was actually genuinely taken aback by today's story. Let me give you some details on it now. So this is from... Uh, Jonathan Van Tam, who was our deputy chief medical officer. If you live in the UK, of course, you'll recognise him straight away. Boris Johnson referred to him as a JVT, bit of a personality uh, in the in the pandemic, it has to be said. Um, now, there's the references there, although you could get this from many, many different sources. Now, um, strangely, and it really is quite strange, this was actually announced via LinkedIn, as far as I can tell today. So the appointment was made in early May, and we now know what is 19th of August. Um, so why the delay? We, we don't know, but it was actually announced on LinkedIn, which you're probably familiar with if you've ever uh, looked for a job online. On the Moderna LinkedIn, UK former Deputy Chief Medical Officer, um, senior strategy advisor in medicine, Nottingham University. Strange job, strategy advisor in medicine. I can't say I've ever studied under a professor of strategy advisor in medicine, but never mind. Um, now, as of the 2nd of May, uh, senior medical consultant to the COVID-19 vaccine manufacturer Moderna, was a member of the government task force during the pandemic made all decisions, this is the government task force, made all decisions on vaccine supply contracts and major investment in manufacturing and clinical opportunities. And um, as always, the references are there. Now, of course, no one's saying that uh, Professor Van Tam anticipated this job uh, in Moderna or kept his slate clean with the vaccine manufacturers to facilitate this in the future. But it really doesn't look good at all. I don't think um i genuinely don't think he, he did those things um but it's not it's not at all a good look this revolving door really something needs to be done about this because big pharma and government are kind of sometimes the relationship's a bit cozier than you and me would like and of course it's often said that a profession is a conspiracy against the rest of us let's carry let's carry on with what we know now the uk government of course uh, under the auspices of this uh, grouping, uh, with Professor Van Tam in it, um, we bought 77 million doses of Moderna uh, vaccine. And I can't remember the price, but I think, yeah, I'm, I'm sure Moderna was consistently the most expensive vaccine. And we bought 77 million doses, you know, way more than the population of the, the entire population of the country. But that's, that's what we bought. Um, at this point, we'll just have a look at a couple of other clips, just in case you can't remember who Jonathan Van Tam was. We need people to take it. This vaccine isn't going to help you if you don't take it. And you will need two doses of this vaccine and most of the others to have full protection. Watching others take it and hoping that this will then protect you isn't going to work necessarily. We don't know if this vaccine will prevent transmission. Our immediate threat is from our current virus. And there is now plenty of evidence that the vaccines that we are deploying are effective against our current virus. So from that perspective, look, please don't delay if you're called take the advantage to protect yourself against the clear and present danger, against the immediate threat. So I hope that's refreshed your, uh, refreshed your memory. Um, seven, 77 million vaccines and the UK government's just struck a 10 year deal partnership with Moderna to build a new factory. Now, this is near uh, Oxford. Um, I, I believe it's being built at the moment. Uh, so the British government is is in bed with Moderna uh, to the tune of a billion pounds as far as we know and this new facility will build mRNA vaccines for uh, COVID, uh, influenza 
and uh, respiratory syncytial virus, uh, uh, as far as we know. And the UK government is tied in for 10 years with this group and committed to buy vaccines for 10 years into the future. Quite incredible, we've committed a billion pounds to buy these vaccines into the future with no evidence of safety or efficacy of the RSV and the influenza vaccine for sure and very questionable uh, safety of the uh, COVID vaccines. And yet, well, have a billion pounds. If it doesn't work out, then we'll still buy the vaccines anyway. What is going on here? You know, this is just very, very, uh, very, very strange. Committed to buy Moderna's vaccines for the next decade from this new factory. Now, if you're sitting in Australia, don't be smug about it because I think it's just outside Melbourne. I'm pretty sure it's Melbourne. Certainly in Australia, there's a Moderna plant being built to produce, um, um, I can't remember, 100 million doses of vaccine a year, I think it was. I think the Oxford plant is scheduled to build 250 million doses a year. The uh, Australia plant, 100 million doses. There's also a plant in Canada, a new Moderna plant, to build a, to construct 100 million doses of Moderna vaccine in Canada. And of course, that's on top of the huge capacity already in the United States. So this is... Australia, Canada, the United Kingdom, the United States all seem to be uh, putting a lot of eggs, shall we say, in the Moderna messenger ribonucleic acid vaccine basket. Let's carry on. Um, so government's committed to buy all this stuff. Uh, now, going back to Jonathan Van Tam, his advisory fee for Moderna has not been disclosed advisory fee nice way to put it but he is prohibited from using privileged information from his time in government to further his business interests <laughs> oh well, that's all right then i thought i thought that i just thought there might be an issue here for a minute but but there's a rule that says he's not allowed to use his government uh, knowledge for uh, furthering his business interests so that that's all fine then isn't it let's uh, hope his brain is well compartmentalized um, now, Rose Whiffen, Transparency International uh, UK. Currently, there are only threadbare safeguards against abuse of the revolving door between the public and private sector. And this created, uh, she believes, a risk of privileged information being misused for commercial benefit. No one's making any accusations of this, of course, but you can see that the risk is apparent. There would appear to be a risk there. Um, now, another, this is uh, Patrick Valance, of course. Um, he was the chief uh, scientific officer during the pandemic. Um, now, he also went through the revolving door. Now, th th this is his uh, official government site, so this is not me making it up. Check it out for yourself. This is official government information here. Chief scientific, uh, government chief scientific officer, April 18 to uh, April 2023. So, chief medical, chief scientific officer throughout the pandemic, hugely influential figure throughout the pandemic. Now, um, he was president of research and development at GlaxoSmithKline, 2012 to 2017. Now, to be fair, we didn't use GlaxoSmithKline vaccines, but of course they are very much big pharma that he worked for and then went into government had been senior vice president at Moderna, Medicines Discovery and Development, joined the company in May 20, 2006, head of drug uh, discovery, became uh, worked his way up to become member of a board, of GlaxoSmithKline board, and the corporate executive team. Check out the references. Now, we don't know what his salary was for all of the years, but the last full year of work for them, it was £4.4 .4 million. Pounds. Um, he did sell most of his GlaxoSmithKline bonus shares before joining the government, but we believe he had £600,000 in these shares when in the government. And um, pay as chief scientific officer was slightly more reasonable. But again, you can see the concern here. People going from big pharma to government, making the decisions, paying big pharma. People going from government into big pharma, making decisions about big pharma, then getting jobs in the same companies. It's uh, it's not it's not the way really we would like things to 
be uh, held up as transparent, shall we say. Um, is the United States squeaky clean? Well, I'm not going to go into the United States now. I've spent enough time on this already. But um, that reference is from Science Magazine, FDA's revolving door. Companies often hire agency staffers. That's Food and Drug Administration agency staffers who manage their successful drug reviews. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, your drug's absolutely great, mate. Fantastic. Have a billion dollars and we'll buy all your drugs. Uh, oh, by the way, have you got any jobs? <laughs> just, yeah. I mean, no one's saying that influenced their authorization of these medicines. But presumably, when they came to interview with the big pharma company, it didn't do them any harm. Presumably. Um, I could give so many references here. A look at how the revolving door spins for the FDA, from the FDA to industry and vice versa. Um, Science magazine, again, is the FDA revolving door too open too wide. Pretty quick answer to that. FDA's revolving door, reckoning and reform. That's from, um, I forget there where that's from. That's, oh, that's from Stanford Law, I think, that one. Uh, revolving door between big pharma industry and the FDA. We could go on. It's just all a bit cosy, isn't it? We want drugs to be developed for the benefit of all humankind. That, that sounds an animal kind, of course, because a lot of the drugs are interchangeable. I mean, most veterinary drugs come from um, come from human medicine, human trials. Um, drugs can even go the other way sometimes, although we won't mention that at the moment. Um, but although so, so some drugs, for example, the drug that won the Nobel Prize in 2015 did go from human medicine to veterinary medicine, but we'll pass on from that. But we need drugs that are cheap, safe and effective. And very often that is not entirely consistent with people making huge amounts of money and keeping the rest of us in the dark. This needs to be transparent. We need to develop whatever drugs are good for a condition. We need to make them as cheaply as possible. And when drugs can be repurposed and we can use generic drugs that are already cheap, that can be manufactured very cheaply. If they help people, I'm not going to stand in the way. Uh, do others stand in the way is a question I'll leave you to answer as I close this video. Thank you for watching.